Welcome to Showboys Gaming. This is Pixel Nick, and I am about to learn how to play uh, Old World. Um, Old World has been out, um, but on the developer's client, I believe. Um, and it, it, recently, this week, it released on Steam. And this is what I've been really excited and waiting for. Um, I just wanted it in my Steam library. I want it to be there. That's where I want to play it. So, here it is on Steam. I'm going to learn how to play. I've never played this before. Um, you're going to be seeing everything right along with me. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of dig into it. And we're going to do learn to play. Already very, very good looking game. And we're going to do the first tutorial. Uh, call, just called The Old World. Old World takes place in a classical and take focused around the Mediterranean Sea and the Middle East, where you lead one of seven nations who left their mark on history. You begin with a single settler, familiar, and must forge an empire in a world filled with already developed nations. This is interesting. Um, obviously, 4X game, I kind of, from what I understand of it and what I've seen from gameplay, it kind of has a... It's a blend between uh, Civilization Six, particularly, and um, kind of like a Total War Rome Two, um, from what I understand. And we'll we'll see kind of the the full blend here. But I see aspects of both those games in this. Um, so we start off with a settler like Civilization, but we're already in a world with empires forged, which is very similar to. Uh, how Rome starts, uh, how that campaign in Total War plays out. So let's start this game. Legitimacy. All right. In the old world, you will explore the map with scouts, expand your nation by founding cities on city sites, Exploit, harvest all resources and luxuries, and recruit armies to exterminate rival nations and tribes, or negotiate and trade with them. It's your choice. Um, so okay. Definitely, hmm, I want to say this leans into a blend of Total War Rome, um, and all the cities are preset in Total War um, Rome, too. And that's going to be my frame of reference. But then... Like humankind, you settle cities on specific city sites, though they settle them in whole territories. It sounds like this might have specific tiles that you have to settle. So, seems like Rome, but with like sackable cities. Essential items. This game is top left. Mm-hmm, very similar. This is a cool mechanic. Um, kind of as a ruler, like you're right, you have so many orders you can tangibly get done in a certain amount of time. So, probably depend, but depending on various stats and stuff, you can obviously increase how many orders you can give in a year, for example. Um, so, more efficient rulers, I guess, could have more orders. Um, I wonder how much depth there is there, but that's a good way to kind of manage um, your decisions. Because obviously, you know, moving. A hundred units, one tile would be a hundred orders. But is that like that's how Civ works? Like everything has so much 
movement per turn or actions per turn. Um, whereas this is kind of saying like, well, instead of being able to move everything one space, like what if I wanted to move one or two things, 50 spaces each, right? So, cause you prioritize that cause, uh, an army, uh, a nation could say, hey, no, right now, the primary thing is, like, war. We're marching out, right? And they cover a ton of ground. Um, so there's some balancing there because obviously you can't logically move so far in a year, like, all the way around the globe. Um, but interesting. Okay, all right. Yeah, as I was kind of theorizing there. Sure, just kept reading. Interesting. Can just buy orders with money, which makes sense. Wow. Access orders are sold off for money after you've, I did not see that coming. That's, that's pretty nifty. I mean, yeah, because you'd be saving money by not doing things. And yeah, kind of spending it. If you don't spend it, you just sort of lose it. You get it back in money. That's awesome. So here we are. Scouts have longer range of vision, higher movement of their units. Usual. Scout on a hill can see further, but its vision range is reduced by trees. A scout's hidden when they are on a tile with trees, making them great at checking what your enemies are up to. That's awesome. The terrain of your units cover also impact how far they can move hill, sand, cross. Okay. Ooh, sand, right? River, scrub. All an extra movement point. Rivers with your borders only require two thirds point. Roads with your borders are unclean on two thirds of a movement point. Let's explore this valley. Move this over to the north and cross the river by right clicking and highlight. All right. So, I would say. There is this map, Civ 6 meets, it doesn't have the the depth or the, the vibrancy, at least on the surface of Civ 6. Um, so it has a little bit more of a, of a Rome type map in that it looks more, less organic essentially. But these clouds, though, over the mountains looks way more realistic. So it's it's definitely striking um, an interesting look. And it's already much more 3D than all of them. Um, very animated. Look at that water of the Aegean Sea. Okay, I'm digging this. This is looking good. I'm sure this all comes much more alive um, in time. So let's see here. Let's try to figure out what we're doing. Lots of buttons, right? Training. All my different rates, luxuries, money. Zero of 27. That's how many orders I have. Oh, if your opponent reaches 27 points, the game ends. Whoa, interesting. <laughs> okay. Animation. I'm sorry, new game over. The map is yet yeah, unexplored. Many dark corners of the world and secrets contained therein await your discovery. Send a scout to peel back the fog and uncover mysterious ruins, hostile barbarians, and mul multiplicity of tribes and other nations and various exotic creeds you might adopt as your state religion. Rumor has it that foul boat. Barbarians are encamped at the end of this valley. Send your scout north to confirm these suspicions. Remember, each concentric blue ring around the unit indicates an order. When scouting, it is a good idea to only move up to the first blue ring each time. That way, yep. This is interesting. Okay, so these must be these blue rings, right? Okay, so they tell me that's one order, which is four orders, and that costs. Four plus three, right? For a total of seven to get here. Hmm. Interesting. Fatigue. You're fatigued and move more. Sure. Click and ear button. Okay. Right. So I'm out of, I'm out of juice on this guy. 
year end. So, wow, what is this 20? I don't get what these numbers are. 19. Oh, she spots some ore on the hill. This ore can be turned to iron at a mine, which can be turned to train warriors in a city. But first, we need to find a city to settle on. The rumor of barbarians being encamped at the end of the valley is true. Some warriors would be handed in half. Scouts can spend an order to harvest yields from a harvestable resource. To do so, click it. The basket. Click the basket. Okay. Button on the action panel on the left. There's scouts. Whoa. Basket button. I feel like I was not paying attention. I don't get these. I do not get these. Ah, oh, it shows up when you get there. Your scouts are harvested. The ore may take a few turns for the tutorial gods to train some warriors for you. Get to explore the valley with your scout. Okay. Oop, intern. Let's keep exploring. What's going on? Okay, we're cooking. Oh, your scout revealed barbarians. Hovel on the riverbank. The lush countryside surrounding the camp would be ideal for your new capital. Of course it is. If only those pesky barbarians weren't in the way. Fortunately, the Toro gods have used the ore you harvested to train some warriors. Normally, you would have trained these units in the city. The warrior is a melee unit, and thus must be adjacent to an enemy unit to attack it. Click the warrior with the left mouse button to select it, then right-click the red-highlighted tile next to the barbarians camp to move there. Finally, with your warrior selected, right-click and click. To, on the camp to attack it. You may continue to explore with your scout. Just be careful not to get too close to the barbarians with your scout in case they attack, since your scout cannot fight back. Interesting. Yay, I got warriors. We strong. Yeah. You've dealt some damage, but these barbarians aren't done yet. In fact, they appear to be occupying a city-state. The map is full of city-states, which can only... Which only locations where settlers can found new cities. Hmm, what? The map is full of city sites. Oh, sorry. Blah. State site. My bad. Claim a city site for your nation by simply moving a unit onto it. You must defeat barbarians before claiming the city site. Your ward may only attack once per turn, so it will take a few turns to defeat the barbarians. The barbarians can, of course, attack you on their turn. Your warrior has already attacked this turn and is now on cooldown. Continue exploring with your scout and proceed... Got it. Listen. Whoa. Whoa. Fatigued. Kill them. Kill them. They attack me. They're weakened. I like I like the detail heart health bars. Did I get resources for that? City side. Greece. Victory. Dang. <laughs> That's kind of a bug. I shouldn't have got all those achievements for getting a victory technically in a in a training, but what ifs? Give them up. When is Greece? See, that's not cool. Um, so basically 34% of players have won is Greece. So that tells me that 34% of players have done this specific tutorial. Um, obviously less because some people actually win is Greece. Um, but able win on able difficulty. See, I didn't win on difficulty. No one do. That's, that's fair. Almost fair. That's cheating. Um, 
win a VP victory and learn to play one. So I really I should got the one learn to play achievement. I don't get that's that's silly. They need to fix that. Ave Imperator, you have defeated the barbarians and taken control of the city site. In this tutorial, we've covered the basics of moving and attacking units, map exploration, and city sites. In the next tutorial, you will found your capital and get your economy up and running. I'm ready.